A very warm welcome to everyone. The next in association with Emerson, uh, we'll be starting the session now. Today's topic is build the centers, and today's discussion will cover areas on how best to build energy efficient data centers, understanding how companies can reduce their carbon footprint, and how the internet Indian enterprises are looking to adopt new emerging enterprises. Uh, today's speaker is Mr. Shrirang Deshpande. who is the director of the data center business emerson network power in india now shrirang is responsible for emerson's data center business handling designing and building turnkey data centers with a focus on energy efficiency and adaptive architecture his thorough understanding of india's data center market has been instrumental in transforming emerson uh, network power into an end to end data center solutions company uh he has over 16 years of experience spanning the power electronics and infrastructure gamut before joining emerson in 2005 as a business entity manager for systems integration and services at glodine tech services for 5 years uh now shriram i would like to request you to take over yeah thank you so much and a warm welcome to all, all of you and good afternoon to all of you it is a great pleasure to be interacting with you all here in this particular session uh, i'll i'll be taking you through uh, how one can build green data centers or i would say how to build most energy efficient data centers now when you talk about green i do not know i mean there is no way there is a matrix available which says this is green or this is not green it is completely governed by how you are able to reduce the energy consumption at the same time getting maximum compute so oflet green grid has developed some metric which which classifies based on a pv but today's arena globally is that rather than pv metric alone please try to make data center more efficient as much as you can and that's the way you can declare it is green with respect to references which are available in the market i see last 2 3 years there has been good amount of traction in india where customers are coming forward and asking and demanding performance of energy efficiency and they are asking for we need this much amount of poe we need this much amount of this much amount of energy efficiency and so on and so forth okay now i will take you to very basic of how to build most energy efficient data center no matter you may be what stage of data center either you are at the planning stage or you are at the already built but you want to more improve it or you are planning maybe some upgradation of the existing data center so all these things categories will help us to understand where all we can make this energy efficiency possible okay my i'm getting into a next slide as i mentioned green data center is a repository of storage management data in which mechanical electrical and uh, computer systems are designed for a maximum energy efficiency so i would not like to say when this is x matrix then it is green it is not that then it is not green so as long as you are able to get maximum compute in a minimum possible energy consumption then you can say it, it can be towards green so here in green data center the material the designs all the resources being utilized to an maximum op optimized state by which it helps you reducing cost reducing total cost of owners and that's how it works now if you go to my next slide there are a lot of challenges which we face uh, in data centers one is energy consumption second is emission of gases because we use refrigerant we use lot of heat emission and which 
increase the CFC levels in the ozone or the environment and that is where the indirect effect of global warming and that's how we should be more concerned about all these matters. Let me go through what PUE matrix available from the green grid and before that we'll understand what is a PUE. As we see in, in our car, we have uh, mileage is an efficiency factor with respect to liter of petrol or liter of diesel by which you are able to find the output upon input. In data center, we do not have any such method. So output is in the form of computing and input is in the form of just energy loss, which is getting into run all the equipments which are part of data center. Okay. And that's how uh, there is no way you can say output upon input will help us with create efficiency of data center. So Green Grid has developed a metric called power research effectiveness by which you, it's a ratio of data center electrical efficiency, sorry, data center electrical consumption at facility level and electrical consumption at IT level. I mean, I, I, IT means a power which actually being used by computing devices and the ratio will called as power efficiency effectiveness. In India, we see varied types of PUE data centers. There are some of them, even three, 2.6, 2.7, 2.8. But in offlet, all the new designs which are being built are less than two. And there are some customers who are now looking forward to make it somewhere around 1.3, 1.4, and as we are a prominent player in the data center build market, we see these challenges are being asked by customer very often. Okay. We, we feel that we can make most energy efficient data centers in India, anywhere bit below 1.5, 1.6, 1.4, depending upon the location, uh, depending upon the tier classification, and depending upon the environmental factor in that particular city. I mean, Delhi versus Bangalore versus Mumbai versus Chennai. So all environment are somewhat different based on which we can decide what topology to be used. Okay, now I am coming to measurement of PUE uh, metric, which is developed by Green Grid which is categorized as category 0, category 1, category 2 and 3. These categories are built up based on the measurement points of kilowatt hour. Green grid strongly promote the point at which you will measure the kilowatt hour. Most of the Indian customers feel that their view is best because probably that has been calculated on the instantaneous basis. But the real term, it has to be calculated over one year span of period, which covers all the seasons, which covers all the types of ambient scenarios. And that's how it has to be measured in kilowatt hours. So while category zero specifies the instantaneous measurement of this ratio, whereas category three mentions or category one, two, three mentions that it has to be on annualized kilowatt hour and to be measured at facility level and to be measured at IT level, computing level. And this one, two, three is categorized based on the where you are monitoring that KWH. It could be at UPS output, it could be at PD output, or it could be at rack input or a server input. So this is how category of PUs are being described and based on which the PU measurement happens. Now if you look at a demography of a data center power usage consumption, in which you will see when you are feeding 100 kilowatt of power into a data center, only 50% of that power 
is available for IT. And that's where we say usage is 100 upon 50. So the, it is, it is pure is at two. Our indoor should be with the same facility kilowatt. How much I can increase the percentage of IT? Can I increase it to 60? Can I increase it to 75? And that's how this ratio we can reduce. And that's how it will help us to improve the overall efficiency, energy efficiency of data center. Now, if you look at where are the losses which are taking place, the majority of losses are happening in cooling and air moment, while electrical losses are primarily about 10 to 13 percent on account of electrical distribution, lighting, UPS, etc. Now, when you look at how do we make our data center green, we have categorized various ways by which you can approach. One is reducing the consumption of IT equipment itself because we believe that a saving of wattage at the source end, rather at the IT devices end, can have a big saving at facility end. I will be describing this in my subsequent slide. There are a couple of other options which we have categorized here, improving efficiency to better cooling systems, airflow management within the rack, within the room, how do we cool uh, systems at the source end, and a lot of options, options which are available uh, here to make this data center as green. Our approach starts right from how you are selecting the IT devices for a data center. Maybe when you are buying this for future, you may want to specify certain elements which will help you to reduce the IT consumption of that computing device, however not compromising computing. Now, if you look at how it helps to reduce the facility load by selecting a reduced consumption on the IT side, a one watt saving at IT kilowatt can yield almost 2.8 kilowatt at the facility level. Because everywhere we are either converting this power from one end to one, one form to another form and another form to third form it, till the time it reaches to server inside. Even if you look at to reject the heat of let's say X kilowatt, we spend almost similar kilowatt or more kilowatt through cooling system. So while you are selecting IT devices henceforth, see to it that you specify reduced IT consumption to get a maximum computing. So this is a message we would we would like to give it through this cascade effect uh, slide. The first approach, what we are trying to suggest here for reducing IT energy usage, is that going for virtualization, by which you can reduce the usage of, improve the usage of computing by reducing number of boxes. And this is very widely accepted fact in the market. And in market, we have seen customers are able to reduce the energy consumption from earlier form to now to as low as almost 30 to 40 percent. This has happened due to removing uh, devices or improving the load management inside the data center. So this is one category or one area where we would like to propose you this. Then next comes, as I mentioned that one watt saving at IT will help us to reduce 2.8 kilowatt. 2.8 watt at the facility. We promote or propose here to consider low power processors or most energy efficient processor without compromising a computing. And this is where uh, many, many of you are buying servers or computing device, you may ask your vendors to specify this. This is one area where can help you to actually reduce the consumption of our IT side itself. The next approach for reducing the IT equipment energy usage 
is a selection of SMPS. Now, most of the SMPSs are configured or designed considering the fully configured servers when it is considering all the highly population servers and the efficiency expected to be very high. Considering dual SMPS inside the box and considering they are operating at load sharing mode, most SMPS are operating between 25 to 40 percent of the range and it is expected that you should demand energy efficiency of a SMPSS at the loading factor of 15 to 35 percent. Okay, and uh, that's how you can select most energy efficient server uh, SMPS, which will help us to reduce again energy consumption at the IT side itself. My next uh, approach is talking about more on the cooling or I would say room preparation. When we go to data center, you will see a lot of leakages in the data center when you talk about cooling system. Please believe that we spend a lot of money to reduce the temperature from X to Y, let's say from 30 degree to 22 degree to maintain in the data center. But all this temperature or air flow get again mixed into hot air and cold air together and that's how lots of energy happens. This leakages could be within the rack, alongside of the rack or under a floor and a lot of techniques are available to this, to today to deal with this challenge. So every time if you are able to improve this losses or reduce this losses in air, air conditioning, your air conditioning can become more efficient and it will help you to reduce the consumption cost. In India, many data centers are still being using normal comfort air conditioner, especially small server room. We are seeing people are using either split ACs, Windows ACs, and uh, some VRV systems. But precision ACs are recommended because they are supposed to have a high sensible heat ratio and take care of data center and the duty cycle of design is also very high considering 24 by 7 operations. So this is one strong recommendation because uh, the utilization or consumption of comfort AC is relatively higher compared to precision AC in the long run and the life cycle cost in a comfort AC is also very high compared to precision AC. So usage of precision AC is very critical here. Okay, then we will talk about my next slide, optimize roof cooling system and temperature. There are many guidelines or improved guidelines available from ASHRAE. There used to be time in India, we used to maintain some 15 degree or 14 degree in cold ice. That has been upgraded by ASHRAE. And now ASHRAE recommends 22 plus minus one for a critical or they also recommend from 18 to 27 depending upon your application. So every temperature rise by 1% or 1 degree will help you to reduce your electrical consumption by 2.5 to 3%. So it is expected now that you can maintain a temperature of cold eye or server inlet anywhere between 22 to 23 degree. That is what will help you to reduce your cost. Now, if you see a current data center which are hardly a couple of years old, when temperature at server inlet was supposed to be maintained at 17, 18 degree, the temperature which is leaving a precision AC system used to be around 14, 13 degree. So there used to be huge amount of loss to maintain such a low temperature which was never desired. So now I would recommend we would set a temperature point anywhere 22 plus minus 1 and that would suffice not only operational requirement, performance as well as help you 
to reduce the consumption there are customers in india who are also now evaluating if they can keep 24 degree as well that's how one can think of reducing energy consumption further uh, air conditioning devices are most maintainable devices it has lot of wear and tear it has lot of challenges so it is expected that you should do a regular preventive maintenance with respect to maintaining the pressure of re refrigerant cleaning the filters cleaning the coils which will also help you to improve the energy consumption by way of higher efficiency from cooling system it is expected that every every 3 months you should visit filters you should visit pressure gauges and check whether refrigerators are properly maintained and uh, also recommended that we clean all the compressor and evaporator coils at condenser side as well as compressor side okay variable capacity system uh data center loads are very dynamic they are different every day the ramp up times are also very different on weekends they are different on month end they are different and every time heat rejection required is going to be different because servers storages and all other devices are going to work on a different loading factor and with that if you can build integrated cooling system which will modulate with respect to the cooling or heat rejection requirement then you can save further electrical consumption so here we recommend customer to use uh, variable compressor or sure. variable capacity uh shiran yes, sorry uh, just one uh, sorry to interrupt your presentation uh, actually the uh, audio is cracking a little bit uh, which is being brought up by a lot of the attendees as well can you just check the connection on your side one minute because it seems to have slowed down yeah but the connection is quite perfect acha it's perfect okay uh so just okay just start again please okay so i recommend i am now coming close to the mic so that uh, people may hear properly great it is expected that we should use a variable capacity compressors in the cooling systems which will modulate the cooling requirement of the data center based on the dynamics of server computing and that's how you can save the energy here modulation means i'm talking about variable capacity scroll compressors as well as fan modulation we also recommend that when we have a cold and hot eye we can close either cold or hot eye so that there won't be any mixing of the hot as well as cold eye over the rack and that also will ensure that there is no wastage happening in the energy another area which i would like to talk about the selection of refrigerant because every refrigerant has its uh, cfc performance and based on which it is recommended in that we should use refrigerant which has got a less potential for ozone depletion uh, issue so now most of the customers or most of the manufacturers are designing the systems with r407c or 410a and we should consider all these factors so that we don't affect ozone depletion potential we should strictly mention hot and cold and approach in india there are quite a few data center i have seen where the racks are installed back to back which means the hot air of front rack is going in the uh, inlet of the server that may impact overall hygiene factor of the data center so it is very important that we should use server rack orientation properly many a customer i have seen 
open the tile open the floor grill in the cold aisle thinking that it's very hot but uh, please tell me please let me know in case of such thing happening it is expected that cold and hot aisle has to be separated hot aisle can go as high as almost 30 degree plus and cold aisle can maintain at least 22 degree plus minus 1 degree so please do not open any floor grills in the hot aisle now if you look at layout it is expected that high density high density grass should be kept in the center of the system even the placement of precision cooling unit should be perpendicular to the aisles they should not be parallel because that might affect the overall air flow below the false flooring we recommend seven pitch layout seven pitch layout means center of one cold aisle to center of second cold aisle will have seven side and that's how the overall placement from a perspective of air flow from the convenience of maintenance placement of all devices will work quite well so any time when you are designing a new data center or upgrading a new data center see to it that you maintain that seven pitch center to center cold aisle should have seven aisle in india we observe that average data center density is about 4 to 5 kilowatt which means maybe sometime one third of data one third one third of rack only is occupied and balance racks are empty but most often those racks are not planked off so it is a possibility and high potential of mixing of air from cold and hot together or it just cold air is passing through a rack and mixing getting mixed in the rack mix mix in the hot air so it is important to use blocker panels when the rack is completely empty or it is important to use blocking plates when in between the server there are air gaps now many times customer has some low density some mid density and some high density in racks it is good to have from a cvd perspective that high kva rack or high kilowatt rack should be at the center of row so that can be fit properly from both the side and there won't be any challenges with respect to hot spot while we are designing a false floor the height of false floor becomes very important it could be as high as 750 to 1000 1000 mm depending upon the overall kilowatt of high density so that under floor air flow can be managed properly most often we have fiber we have copper cables below the floor we have electrical systems below the floor which will obstruct the air flow which is going to the rack so it is expected that that has to be planned properly now recommended best practice so that you use power cable under the floor and copper and fiber cable above the rack you can use a tray above the rack that will simplify your uh, air flow that will simplify your lot of restrictions which may come up come below the floor so many times when you are using uh, copper pipes or water pipes it is important that it has to be planned properly many data centers in india after 3 to 4 years get so much piled on with lot of cables and most often it is seen that cables which required to be removed were never removed only new cables get added okay that's how my next slide talks about recommendation of uh, what should be a false floor height depending upon the rack kilowatt so it is recommended anywhere around 3 to 4 kilowatt you can use about 700 to 1000 mm and if if uh, density is more it can go as high as almost 1.2 meter also there are some data centers in india 
which are built more than 1000 mm pass floor height but then overall height of the floor or building has to be considered properly right at the building construction level then as i mentioned as there are a lot of uh, air flow openings under the tile or nearby racks that need to be sealed up properly even cable entry points to the rack also need to be blocked through cold lock system there are a lot of new techniques available in the market today either way of grommets or way of brushes that can be used for the purpose of blocking the air or mixing the air if you look at your data center many a time you get into a issue of recirculation of hot and cold air so there is a distance between two server or a gap between two servers where in hot air hot air get mixed with air cold air and that can be avoided by putting banking plants banking panels properly so these if you see these are all very small small tips which will improve the energy consumption or reduce your uh, operating cost and uh, there are many things are low hanging fruits which you can start even doing from tomorrow and maybe as you move on forward all the strategies can be adapted over a period of time okay it is recommended that the depth of the rack should not be just 600 by 800 or 600 by 1000 you can take higher depth rack which will help you to manage the cable properly so that balance 200 mm or 150 mm behind the rack or a back side of the rack is available to dress up the cable properly which will also not uh, block the air and uh, create any hot spot inside or outside the rack then comes ups ups technology and engineering has also evolved out there are ups systems used used to give 80 85% efficiency at 100% load and when you utilize them lower efficiency would have been much lower also but today ups systems are available with 95% plus efficiency across any loading factor so it is recommended that you should take high efficiency ups systems which can be anywhere around 95% plus and that 95% efficiency should be available at respective of what is the utilization percentage okay uh, we do have lot of electrical pollutions happening inside data centers because of uh, harmonic uh, distortions uh, because of total harmonic current factors and battery also that needs to be also handled we recommend to use your transit voltage surge suppression which can take care of all your transients which are being generated from the switching of the loads or maybe passing on to sources which may impact the operations of any equipment now if you look at battery battery is also to be considered a very important factor because it's consumable uh, in india batteries available are about 250 to 300 cycles of this discharge and uh, those are need to be replaced or replenished every 3 3 years or so that also will impact lot of environmental and safety factors we recommend that we should use longer design time battery so the replenishment do not happen so often and we also recommend that we should use a hydrogen meter inside the battery room along with the uh, fire suppression system because many a times data center gets impacted because of there is some fire issue with the battery so this way you know you can help improving the environment reduce the cost all the techniques or all the elements or attributes which i have spoken are very basic and very small in nature which will help you to 
improve the health factor of data center and improve the energy efficiency. And uh, thank you once again for taking an opportunity or for a discussion and taking time out from your busy schedule. Thank you so much.